that you would that you would speak through this through my words today. A Father, that you would challenge us, that we might hear you and respond in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I want to tell you a story of a young lady. I think her picture is about to uh, will be up here in just a minute. Uh, this young lady, her name is Jenny. And Jenny came to the church that I pastored in Renton, Washington. Jenny's family is Buddhist. Uh, Jenny grew up uh, in the city of Renton. Uh, went to school through, the, through all of the, her uh, school years there in Renton. Uh, Jenny now teaches uh, elementary school in a neighboring town. But Jenny came to our church because one of her friends invited her to come. A girl that was very active, young lady, very active in our church, invited her. She'd invited her who knows how many times and invited her and invited her and she wouldn't come and wouldn't come. And finally, she said, sure, I'll come. Well, Jenny started coming. Uh, Jenny came to our church for probably about four or five months and she would hear what was say, being said. She, you could tell that she was gaining interest. And she was becoming more and more curious about what this, this whole thing of, about Jesus was. But she had no background at all. None at all. Then we said, we, we put out, we were going to have our uh, church member, new church member, prospective member orientation. And Jenny signed up. And she came and she sat in my living room and we talked about all of the things, you know, I talked about what our church believed, how we operated as a church, and all of these important things that, that if you are going to become a part of a church, you kind of need to know. But I'm sitting thinking the whole time through this that, you know, Jenny, this really is not what you need. But the good thing is that in that orientation, there was a little part on how you become a follower of Jesus. And so I shared the gospel that night. And through hearing the gospel again, for some reason it just clicked this time. And Jenny made a decision to accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And that was great. And I was excited. But the challenge for Jenny was when she went home. Because you see, Jenny still lived with mom and dad, with her parents, with her sister. And Jenny began to experience the challenge to her faith. She said, you know, she said, her family wasn't very active Buddhist. But they were anti-Christian. And, and Jenny experienced the challenge. Uh, when I left, we were still waiting to baptize her. Not because she wasn't ready. Not because she didn't have the faith. But because at this point, her parent, her family was beginning to open up at least to the idea of Jenny's faith. And we knew that if we were to go forward with her baptism, that it would just break off that relationship. And so she's waiting and witnessing and, and sharing Christ's love with her family, hoping to see that come. But I will tell you, this young lady faced the potential loss of her family because she claimed the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to read a passage of Scripture here that for all, for, let's just say, probably every single one of us, you're going to read this and you, and you go, okay, I know it's true because Jesus said it. You know, it's in, if you got the Bible with the red letters, it's in the red. And, and if you're like me, you're going to say, I know it's true. I believe it's true, but you just go, it's not going to happen in my life. I'm not going to face this kind of challenge. But I think the reality is, you're going to see today that yes, you might. Let me read it. Luke chapter 12, I'm going to start reading in verse 49. Jesus says, I came to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already set ablaze. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how it consumes me until it is finished. Do you think that I came here to give peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. 
From now on, five in one household will be divided three against two, and two against three. They will be divided father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Now, how many of you, you know, you don't have to raise your hand, but you read this and you just go, okay, yes, I believe it because Jesus said it, so it's got to be true. But it's not true in my life. I, I grew up, you know my family. I grew up in a Christian family. When I decided that I was going, when you know, I really decided, yes, God has called me to be a, a, a vocational minister. I wasn't scared that I was going to go home and have my mom and dad kick me out of the house because I wasn't going to sell tires for Sears. I mean, I had no fear of that. I had no concern. I mean, I went home and, and I knew that my mom and dad would be saying, oh, that's awesome. That's great. You know, the only time that I ever really got scared was when I went home and said, uh, Mom and Dad, we're moving to Washington State. <laughs> uh, that was the only time. And they weren't real happy, but they didn't throw us out. And then when we were living in Washington State and had to go tell my in-laws that we were moving from Washington State to Texas, I jokingly say that I went from being the favorite son-in-law to the least favorite son-in-law, and I'm the only son-in-law. <laughs> and, and I still am kind of the, I, no, my parent, in-laws are great. You'll get to meet them soon. Uh, they are great. They just took them a minute to kind of bring that in. But I've been very fortunate. And, and I'm going to guess that most every one of you are just like me. You have not experienced family or friends persecuting you because of your faith. And so you read this and you just kind of scratch your head and go, uh, let's dig into it though. First thing we need to understand is this, that we will face heartache because Jesus faced heartache. Jesus faced heartache. How do we know that? Well, one, the book of Hebrews tells us very simply that Jesus faced grief and sorrow and pain and suffering. It points it out very clearly. So we can look back at that and it tells us that Jesus was acquainted with grief. That's a reality. Now, you may go, okay, that's great, Grant, but what was that grief that he was experiencing? Experienced? Number one, he lived in poverty. Jesus was born into a very poor family. We know that because if you look back when Jesus was brought to the temple as a baby, his mom and dad, his earthly mother and father, gave a offering that was required by the law, but it was the one they gave was the one that was required for those who were very poor. That was the offering that Jesus' family gave. So he lived in poverty. He lived in a nation that was, riled by, that was ruled by oppressive foreigners. He lived in a nation that was, was just seething with, with fighting against the government that was over them. Uh, there was constant battles and, and challenges to the government. Jesus lost his earthly father. His earthly father died, so he experienced the pain of someone that he loved, probably very closely, dying. But then have you ever thought about this? Jesus lived knowing how he would die. If we're honest, every one of us admits that we know that at some point we're going to die. Right? I mean, you know, once you get past your teenage years... You realize that, yes, at some point, my life is going to end unless Jesus returns before then. There's some reality to that. But can you imagine living knowing not just that your life will end, but knowing the pain that is going to come with the end of your life? Jesus knew that he was going to die by crucifixion. He points to it time and time again throughout his ministry. He knew that. He understood. Can you imagine the, the grief that that must have brought to his life, the heartache that must have brought to his life, to live knowing not just that I am going to die, but that I am going to die horribly. I had to bring pain. But then add to that even the fact that he knew that when he died, that his closest followers would reject him. And leave him. 
and that he would be left alone experiencing all of that pain completely by himself. So Jesus faced heartache. And because he faced heartache, one of the reasons we can know that we will face heartache is because he did. Very simply, Jesus faced it. How can we as his servants, as his followers, how can we expect anything better than what our master received? And if you tr receive treatment better than your master from the enemy, maybe you need to wonder about whose side are you really on. We should expect that we will experience heartache in life. Because he did. But there's some other things. And this is where, as we go through these next ones, maybe one of these is going to hit you and you're going to say, you know what, yeah, that's true. One of the reasons that we will experience heartache is because some won't follow. Some will not follow. Some will choose not to experience the hope of Christ in their life. There are going to be some that are going to say that, I don't understand what you're doing. Especially if you grew up in your teenage years, your early adulthood years, and you didn't follow in the path of Jesus. You know, if you were one of those that during your teenage years, you kind of walked off on a different path, and you made some choices that were not real good, and you, maybe you veered off of that path farther and farther and farther, and then one day you woke up and you said, what on earth am I doing? This is crazy. And you make those changes in your life and you turn back to God and, and now all of a sudden your friends that you used to go hang out with on Friday night and do the things that you used to do on Friday and Saturday night, they call you and they say, hey, let's go out this Friday night. We're going to the bar. And you go, ah, you know, I don't really want to do that anymore. Well, there are going to be some that are going to ridicule you. They're going to make funny. They're going to laugh. They're going to mock you. They're going to call you names. If you're a guy, you know, they're going to call you a wimp. And that's when they're being nice. And, and you're going to say, but wait a second, man, I haven't changed. You know, I'm still the person I was. I just have realized that those things that, that, I, that we did are not helping me. They're not benefiting me. And I don't want to do those anymore. And so you'll experience pain heartache because some will mock you and ridicule you and I'm not even talking about family just friends friends will say what are you doing why won't you go with us or when they start to tell stories that you just don't want to hear anymore and you say you know I really don't want to hear that story this got parts to it that I don't need to hear. You'll experience ridicule. It's a reality. You're going to experience ridicule because some will seek earthly comfort and security. There are going to be some that are going to ridicule you because what they want is comfort in this life. And what you have chosen in following Jesus is not comfort in this life, but comfort in the next life. And there will be some that will ridicule you. There will be some that when it comes time and, and you're offered a promotion at work and you say, no, I'm not going to take the promotion because by taking that promotion, I'm going to add 20 hours to my work week and that takes 20 hours away from my being able to serve my Savior. And you say, you know what, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take that promotion. I'm not going to take that extra work, even though the money would be great. The prestige would be great. And, and, you know, it would be nice to have people look at me and say, wow, he's a success in life. But I'm not going to take that because it would take away from me being able to serve my Savior. Or you take the promotion because God has called you to take the promotion, and you get that extra huge bump in your paycheck. And everybody around you says, oh man, you know what? You need to drive a nicer car. You need to build a bigger house. You need to take fancier vacations. You know, instead of going down to the Texas Hill Country, you need to go down to Acapulco or to Rome or wherever it might be. And they say, you know, well, you got all of this extra money. Spend it on yourself. You've earned it. And you say no. 
Instead of building a bigger house, I'm going to increase my giving to God's causes. And instead of buying a better car, a fancier car, I'm going to be able to give to somebody that needs it. Instead of taking a fancier vacation to Acapulco, I'm going to go to another place in Mexico where tourists don't go. And I am going to be hot and sweaty and I'm going to be exhausted when I get home, not because I've been sitting by the beach sipping my non-alcoholic margarita. Did you get that? <laughs> there we go. Right, it made you laugh. But because I've been serving in a mission. People will ridicule you. They won't understand. Why would you go do that? It doesn't make any sense. Some will ridicule because you, you, seek, you seek Christ over earthly comfort. Some will seek family over faith. The most often time that we hear about this is when a missionary is saying that they have felt called to go overseas and their family says, no, you can't go. A grandparent say, how dare you take my grandkids away? How, how dare you do that? Or, or how dare you put my grandkids into a place where they would be in danger? Or they're not going to have all of the advantages and the benefits that we have here in, in America. And a missionary still says, no, I'm seeking my faith. God has called me and I'm going. Sometimes, you know what, you may, see, you may experience heartache because... You say to your family, this is what God has called me to do. And that may not even be that you're going overseas to serve in missions. It may just be again that you say to your family, I have a job to do. And that is to help transform lives by the power of the gospel. And I'm going to take the advantage, and I'm going to take every advantage that I have to go do that. You may experience a heartache because family will mock and ridicule you. Even family that's in church every Sunday, reads their Bible, and claims to be followers of Christ, it might happen. But there's another reason. And I'm probably going to make some of you mad right now. You may experience heartache because some seek familiarity, they seek being happy over adventure. And you're going, okay, Grant, what's so crazy about that? I personally can't stand Christian radio, especially the ones that had the advertising slogan, Safe for the Family. And you may go, wait a second, Grant, how dare you say that? Here's why. Boys, young boys growing up, they seek adventure, challenge. Uh, why do little boys play cops and robbers, cowboys and Indians? Why do they play with a stick and pick it up and pretty soon they're playing guns, they're playing soldiers? Why do they do all of that? Because young men growing up they want to be challenged. They want something that is, that is going to put a, be a risk that they got to go for. And they sit in back of mom's minivan all of their young days growing up, and they hear Christianity is safe. Christianity is comfortable. Christianity doesn't have challenge. If you just follow Jesus, everything's going to be okay. And they begin to look and say, I don't want that. I want a challenge. I want something that, that I got to go and I got to strive for. I want something that's going to be hard. I want something that when I look back on my life, I can say, man, I did something. And unfortunately, Christian publishers know who controls the pocketbook and who buys the literature products in the family. 
And it's not dad. It's mom. And therefore they market directly to who's going to buy their products. And as a follower of Jesus, when you get to a point where you say, you know what? I'm tired of having the familiar. I'm tired of having the easy. I want a challenge in life. Uh, that I want to do something that, that I'm going to look back on in, in my later days. That I'm going to look back on and I'm going to say, I accomplished something for Christ. Not that I earned any merit with God. Please trust me, I am not saying that. Not that I did anything to earn my salvation. But I want to tell you, I want to look back in my life, and I want to look back and I want to say, I did something that was not safe. That I did something that was challenging. I did something that was hard. People ask a lot of times, why, Grant, why did you go to Washington? Why didn't you stay in Texas? And that's my answer. Because I knew how to be a Texas Baptist pastor. I'd watch Skip do it. I knew how to do that. Now, the reality was, I could have done the Texas Baptist pastor thing without really thinking about it. But I didn't want that. Because it would have been too easy. I wanted a challenge. And so I went to an area where I would often meet people that had no understanding of who God was. I went to an area that I would be playing football, playing catch at a barbecue picnic at one of our church members' houses and be out in the front yard playing catch. And then the owner of the house that had invited us all brought us in and said, hey, listen, it is the tradition of this house that we say a prayer before we eat. And to have a little sixth grade boy that I'd been playing catch with look up at me, he didn't have an idea what I, that I was a pastor. And even if you'd have told him he'd a pastor, he didn't have no idea what a pastor was. But he looks up at me and he goes, Grant, what's pray? And I was like, oh, what? I went to Washington because I wanted to challenge with that. I didn't want to be somewhere safe. Sometimes when we choose adventure and challenge for the name of Christ over familiarity, comfort, family, all of those other things, people aren't going to like it. But you have to choose. What are you going to choose? Obedience or comfort? It's your choice. I can't make it for you. But what are you going to choose? If you've got your connection card, I encourage you to turn to the back. Here's my challenge for you. Number one, I will choose Jesus over comfort. Now, I'm going to just tell you, don't just mark it because you think, oh, Pastor Grant's going to get this, and he's going to think I'm less of a Christian if I don't mark that I'm going to choose Jesus over comfort or I'm going to choose Jesus over family. You notice what I put there? Jesus over family. Some of you don't like that. But you have to choose. Who's most important? My family or my God? Now hopefully those things can, can line up together. But you need to choose right up front. If they don't line up together, which am I choosing? But before you mark those, understand this. When you mark that I am going to choose Jesus over comfort, God is going to throw something at you that's going to make you say, am I going to live up to it? So don't just mark it because you think Pastor Grant's going to see this and I want him to think I'm a great Christian. You need to mark it because you want to say, I want to live it. If you're tired of being safe, and take that step. I'll tell you, it's scary. It was scary. Getting in a car 18 years ago, I guess I was in a truck. Getting in a rider truck with all of my possessions, my daughter and my wife flying on a plane a couple days after I left. 
and driving this truck with everything we owned, which was not a lot, up to this foreign country, and we were only about 15 miles from another foreign country. It was terrifying. I was scared. I, as we were driving, there were some times where I thought, what in the world have I done? This is crazy. I need to turn around and go back, and I just need to get a job at a little country Baptist church and start there, and you know, in a couple of years, do okay there, and move up to a bigger Baptist church and a bigger Baptist church, and, and by the time my daughter gets to be in a youth group, I'll be in one that's got a big youth group, and, and everything will be okay. And there were some times where I said, I want to do that, but I kept coming back to, no. I don't want comfort. I want a challenge. And so I want to ask you, do, which do you want? Do you want comfort in life? Or do you want obedience? If you were here and you are not a follower of Jesus, you may go, wait a second. Uh, some of you may be saying, Grant, there's, there's people that aren't followers of Jesus, and you tell them, man, you become a Jesus, and, Jesus follower, and life's going to be tough. You know what I'm going to say? You're absolutely right. It's the coolest thing in the world. I loved my time in Washington because it was a challenge. I love waking up and saying, today I want to choose obedience over comfort. Not just because I know that in the end it's going to be a lot better for those of us that choose obedience to Jesus over comfort. That's not my only reason. My, only, my reason also is because it's more fun. Life is more fun when you take on challenges. So are you willing to take the challenge? If you're not a follower of Jesus, let me tell you, yeah, it's going to be tough at times. But it's the best thing that will ever happen to you. As you learn to follow Jesus, as you learn to, to follow His commands, there are times that it's going to be tough. But you will look back at the end of your life and you will say, I am so glad I chose this path. So if you've never taken that choice, made that choice to become a follower of Jesus, then say, yes, I want to follow him. After we pray, we're going to sing, and I'm going to be standing here. If, if you'd like to come, and you know, maybe you just need to come and kneel and pray and, and talk to God, that, to tell him. There have been some times in my life, Jesus, where I have not, I've chosen comfort over obedience then do that. If you want to come and just pray, you know what, Jesus, I've been pretty obedient. But I've never really come to that point to say to you, give me the biggest challenge I can handle. Maybe you want to come and pray that. And you say, God, I just want to be obedient no matter what. Or maybe you want to come and talk to me about becoming a follower of Jesus, giving your heart to Him, giving your life to Him, and taking on the challenge. Whatever it is, I want to ask that you just be obedient to his command. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, I pray today that we would be obedient. Lord, you have called us to choose you over comfort or anything else in life. And Father, I pray that we would be obedient and we would say yes to whatever you may call us to. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing together.